Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am concerned by this budget request because deficits, as far as the eye can see, into perpetuity is not the way we're going to uh, achieve fiscal responsibility in this country for the future of this country, for the future generations of this country. We owe it to them to rein in the excessive spending that we've seen over the past several years, particularly over the past two years. Um, one of the existential threats facing this country is our level of debt, our uh, excessive deficits now over a trillion dollars a year and growing by all accounts over the next 10 years under the president's budget. Um, another threat to this nation is uh, immediate and direct and is on our southern border and is being ignored by this president. Um, I see that uh, last year Congress enacted $61 billion for Homeland. This year uh, the budget proposes, and I'm just reading a number here, $60.4 billion in discretionary budget authority. And I know that you're talking about TSA fees and other kinds of uh, revenues, but that is a cut for Homeland, even in the face of uh, 2.7 million Border Patrol enforcement actions, a 30% increase over fiscal year 2021. And since President Biden's been in office, there have been nearly 4.7 million migrant encounters at the southwest border. The population of Virginia is 8.8, .8, so you're over half of the population of Virginia at this point. Um, that's not counting the 1.2 million known gotaways who evaded Border Patrol agents in the last two years. Uh, but despite this increase, the Biden administration is looking to cut the appropriation for the department as a whole, including for U.S. Customs and Border Protection and U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. But at the same time, in a reflection of the values of this administration uh, and their uh, failure to protect the rights uh, enshrined in this Constitution, uh, the president's budget requests $2 billion for the ATF to increase regulations of the firearms industry, among other directives. Uh, can you tell me specifically, among of this $2 billion, uh, will any of these funds go toward the enforcement of bans on pistol braces often used by veterans, assault rifle bans, the creation of a gun owner registry, or the elimination of manufacturer immunity as part of their efforts to increase regulation of the firearms industry? Let me be very clear what the ATF funds are about. Keeping guns out of the hands of dangerous people, implementing the Bipartisan, Safe, Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, uh, and making sure criminals don't have access to guns which are being trafficked in this country. That I think is a bipartisan uh, concern. Uh, we can do that without infringing on the rights of law-abiding citizens. And on DHS, so I'm commitment. happy to submit for the record uh, that DHS is actually getting a 9% increase. So I welcome bipartisan cooperation to provide these resources. I, I reject the characterization of it as a 9% increase. But your question is, uh, well, your answer, can you commit that none of these funds will go to the creation of a gun owner registry? This is... Gun and owner I'll, I'll, I'll repeat it. Law, gun owner registry. Law abiding citizens tracking gun owner should have purposes. is not the focus. It is about going after dangerous criminals. Everybody in this country has seen mass shooting after mass shooting after mass shooting. And they are asking us to do more about it. This is what that's about. So this administration wants to create a gun owner registry to track the lawful purchases of gun uh, of guns by <clears throat> law abiding citizens. That is a violation of the Constitution, and uh, I think it demonstrates the uh, neglect of this administration to its responsibilities under the Constitution to protect those rights of the citizens. I yield back.